Well, welcome. Welcome to the Institution of Civil Engineers and welcome to this debate on growth and resilience of future cities. My name is Ian Allison. I'm Mott McDonald's uh, Global Head of Climate Resilience. I'm Ellie Cosgrave. I'm a civil engineer by training and am now an academic on the Livable Cities Research Programme at University College London. I'm Paul Copping and I work uh, in the Royal Borough of Greenwich. I'm Claire Wildfire, a Technical Director at Mott MacDonald. My name is Andrew Comer, I'm a partner at Consulting Engineers Bureau, Hapold. My name's Stephen Trueheller, I'm another chartered engineer and very proud to be. Every time we have severe weather, our infrastructure seems to collapse. Engineers really aren't going to be able to cope with the future, are they? The, the reality is most cities, most urban environments are underpinned by the infrastructure and the, uh, and the buildings that are being planned and designed and delivered by civil engineers and structural engineers and engineers generally. It's just because you were successful last year doesn't mean to say you're going to be successful in, in the coming year. I'm very happy with, with the uh, creation of the Independent Infra Infrastructure Commission. Um, but the next step to that is creating the procurement mechanisms that begin to reshape the urban centres so that they're more suited to the future predicted needs. The issue is, is not the problem solving ability, it, it's, it's the ability to properly define the problem. The scenario planning is, is, is a very, very big part to play. But until we start broadening this whole debate out into the policy makers, into the financiers, understanding where this money is going to come from to make these changes, then as an engineering profession, we can't start solving the problem. The road to resilience isn't necessarily linear in any city. So let's not confuse sort of linear development. We could go back to the 18th century and solve um, cholera with effectively the tools that we have today. The important thing going forward is actually we perpetually realise that as engineers, we may not just have to do things, we might also have to undo things. Irrespective of how good or skillful or far-sighted or what capable civil engineers are, can we really hope to have much influence unless we get more of our own kind within the centres of politics? In that as engineers, we're far too polite and we do need to assert the impact that we can have more on society. And I wonder, actually, where are the engineers in putting themselves in, in challenging the questions? Where are they sitting at, perhaps, the upcoming COP and saying... Um, this is what we need to do and this is what we need to do to drive change. It's, it's actually when you think about um, cross-sector opportunities that you can achieve massive change. We have, we, we, we're always going to be meaningful. It's, 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 about, uh, it's about being able to leverage as much influence as we possibly can. But at the moment, as a profession, we do not have that influence at that level how do we make sure that if we are having impact, it's sustainable beyond you know, short-term election cycles? I think there needs to be an institutional capability within the engineering sector that can convene um, experts and voices and be a, a go-to. We have to be confident to show um, the decision makers what failure looks like. Will the next conference of parties realistically deliver meaningful change and what impact might it have on our city resilience strategies? There's got to be a fundamental shift in the way that countries negotiate with each other to, to change things. I think the same is true at a local politi political level, a, a national level. The reality is we're going to have to deal with some really nasty situations over the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Well, we've had a really excellent debate today, lots of good discussion, but that debate will continue. We have a breakfast meeting in Brighton on the 19th of November. We have our Triennial Cities Conference here on the 9th and 10th of December, and it will go on after that because this is a hugely important point. It's an important point not just for the profession, not just for this institution, but indeed for the world.